Unit 9, Lesson 2 talks about geometric sequences. So a sequence that is geometric is a pattern created by multiplying the same number. So if you Remember, if you want to, um, let's say you divided by three, that means you multiplied by one third. So the comma ratio, which is a lowercase r, that is the number that is being multiplied to get each next term. Now, for some patterns, it might be a little harder to find the ratio. So to find your ratio, you're gonna take any next term and divide it by the previous term. Now, because this is written as a fraction, you want to reduce. We generally don't change them to decimals unless the decimals terminate. Otherwise, you won't get the exact numbers in the pattern, okay? So your answers can be fractions um, or decimals that do stop. So we've got three sequences. Determine if the sequence is geometric. If so, find the ratio and then find the next three terms. All right, so this one might be a little bit harder, but I can tell by looking, I'm gonna multiply by negative two. We multiply by negative two and we multiply by negative two. Now, if you're not really good at um, the arithmetic, you can always take any second term and divide it by the previous term. Second term divided by the previous term, okay? So do whatever you feel comfortable with. So yes, this is geometric. Our ratio is negative two, and then we'll find the next three terms. So negative 64 times negative two is 128. 128 times negative two is negative 256, and negative 56 times negative two is positive 512. All right, let's look at the next pattern. So 60, to negative 30, I'm not really sure what we multiply. So we can take the next term and divide it by the previous term. Order is important. So two negatives make them positive and they both divide by 30 and we get one half. And so if you can tell that we divide by two, notice our ratio means we multiply by one over two, okay? So this is geometric. Our ratio is one half, and then we'll find the next three terms. So we've got negative 15 times one half, and we can write that two ways. We can either write that as negative 15 halves, or you can write that as negative 7.5. Since this decimal stops, it's a good answer. And then I'm gonna take negative 15 halves, times one half, which is negative 15 fourths, or negative 7.5 divided by two, which is negative 3.75. And then same thing, negative 15 times, negative 15 fourths times one half is negative 15 over eight, or take 3.75 and times one half is negative 1.875. Do not round any of your decimals if you're using them. Ooh, the next one. Well, I can tell that they alternate, so it is a pattern. I just don't know if that's geometric. So we're gonna check. And then I'll take my next one divided by previous and my last term divided by the previous. Well, Negative five over five is negative one. Five divided by negative five and negative five divided by five. So I do get the same number each time when I divide. So that means it is geometric. So our ratio is negative one. So our next three terms, I've got negative five times negative one, times negative one, times negative one. All right. So how to find terms given the explicit formula? It's the same way that we did arithmetic. So number one is you're going to use the general formula, 
given. We are going to substitute the terms that they want. For requested terms. And then three, we're going to simplify. Now, if some of the numbers are really, really large, your calculator won't actually give you the exact answer. So you can leave those answers in exponential form. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little asterisk there. So let's look at the first one. They give us a pattern, a formula, and they want the first five terms. Okay, so remember, n equals one, n equals two, to get each term. And same thing, since it's a pattern, once you get a couple of terms, you might be able to do this quicker than using the formula. So for n equals one, I'm gonna type that into a calculator. So two times four to the one minus one power, so four to the zero is one times two. Then I'm gonna substitute two. So two times four, two minus one is first, two times four is eight. Then I'll substitute three, so two times four squared. And I can kind of see, oh, I'm multiplying four each time, and that was the base. That's not a coincidence. That is how it works. If you're not sure, keep using the formula, though. So for work, you can show this under the terms. That's really all you have to show. And then substitute five. And let me see what that is. 512. Okay. Uh, given the explicit formula, we want to find the seventh term. Remember that notation. And the hundredth term. So our 17th term, we're going to substitute 17, so we get 3, 17 minus 1 is to the 16th power. Now, that is a really large exponent, and we'll see if your calculator does it. If your calculator doesn't, then we can just leave that answer. The 100th term is definitely going to be too large. You don't want anything that is written with a decimal because your calculator is doing that in scientific notation. Okay? So if your calculator did 3 to the 16th, go ahead and write that answer. If it doesn't, these are good. All right, let's do our explicit general formula. So for geometric, it's the same kind of notation. Okay, so a sub n still stood for our general term, and you're always going to want to keep this. a sub 1 is our first term. You want to find that. r is the ratio, which is what you're multiplying by, and n is the number of the term that you're looking for. For a general formula, you typically want to keep the n, and you want to keep the a sub n. You'll want to find a sub 1 and find the ratio. Okay, so our directions, my notes got cut off, but we want to find the explicit formula. So this is an explicit equation. We're going to go ahead and use that. And then we'll substitute what we know. So I want to keep the general term. I know my first term is 1. My ratio, well, we got to find out what are we multiplying by. I can see that we're multiplying by 2 each time. So our ratio is 2. Now, these numbers, order of operations, still goes in play. So we're not allowed to multiply them together. But since this is a 1, I don't technically have to write that down. So this is probably what you'll see for your final answer. Let's look at our second example. So a n equals a 1 to r n minus 1. So we want to keep a sub n. 
Our first term is negative 3. Our ratio, well, let's see, what are we multiplying by? We're multiplying by negative 2. Since this is a negative, you need to use parentheses. And we're not allowed to multiply those together. So this is our final answer. Please use parentheses because order of operations would be different if you don't. Now, same thing for recursive. You always want two formulas. One is going to be the first term. And then the second one is going to use the notation. So remember that stood for our next term and our previous term, and then whatever our pattern is. So if let's look at our same two examples. We wrote the explicit, and let's compare it to the recursive. So I have to state my first term. That's part of your answer. And my notation. And then our pattern was to multiply by 2. So you can write this afterwards, but usually we write it in front. That's it. So these are going to be a lot easier and less work. Same thing. We know our first term. And our pattern was to multiply by negative 2. So we've got negative 2 times our previous term. All right, so notice they don't look the same. They have some similarities, 